Hello guys, Scott Fratcher here, captain of Orion, 90-foot catamaran, in charter and private use. And I've been captain now for about four years, and I thought I would do up a quick video and tell you my 10 favorite things about Orion. So obviously this is a magnificent vessel, and I'm not just saying that because I'm captain, I'm saying that because I've spent 30 years moving around on all different kinds of boats here and there, and this is definitely one of the best, most comfortable, outrageously beautiful boats that I have ever been on. And so I'm very happy to be here, very proud to be here. And I'm gonna tell you about the first thing. Number one reason, well, number 10, if I go backwards, uh, is the skiff. Now, it's not just a skiff, it's a whole skiff, the skiff launching system. So let me just give you a quick rundown. The skiff itself, the tender, is kind of like the car for the house. And so all of our adventuring, we tend to do out of the skiff. So the boat, we pull up to a new island, we anchor, we jump in the skiff, and away we go. So you'll hear that a lot. People will say things just like that. Now they went off on, a, on an adventure. Well, our skiff is super easy to launch. It's in davits, and it's just, you just walk out there and you just release the lines, and that's it. Lower it down into the water. And lifting it is super easy. Now, what effect does this have? Well, compared to other boats where launching the skiff can be a whole ordeal. In fact, I get these other catamaran guys on other guys on the big cats and and I, I launch the or I lift up the skiff sometimes and I and they'll stand there and they'll go, wow, that that's it. And I see all these other crazy systems that people use for lifting their skiff. They make extension poles that come out of the boom, just as an example. And that hold the halyard out and they lift with the halyard, all trying to get away from, I don't know, davits or something? I don't know why they make these things so incredibly complicated to lift a skiff because it's something that we have to do four or five times a day. When we're in charter, we'll easily have that skiff up and down four times in a day. Five or six or seven would be, would be normal, wouldn't be, un, wouldn't be unheard of at all. We'd probably move the boat three times, so it's three times right there that we have to, that we have to lift the skiff. We lift it every night. And so the effect on you as the user is that if the skiff is easy to launch, it means you go on adventures more often. It means that when you're sitting in port and someone says, hey, hey, should we run out to the, uh, the little snorkel zone? So I'm like, oh, I got to take the cover off the skiff. Oh, and then I got to hook up the battery. Oh, then I got to get that. Other, oh, then we got to do that boom thing. So it means that the ability of the crew and the guests to go out on adventures is much, much simpler. You're encouraged to because the skiff action lifting deployment is so simple. Another thing about that skiff is that the skiff itself is designed to go under the underbelly of the boat. So what this means is that if the, if the Orion is, let's say, backed up to a dock and we're stern tied to, we can launch the skiff in the back of the boat between the dock and the and the boat. There's a little square there with a little area where the skiff lowers down into. And we're not trapped against the against the dock. We can just turn and go right under the underbelly and pop out the front of the boat and away we go. And that is really cool. It took someone a lot of time to to design that in. The skiff itself is a rib, it's a 17 foot rib, and it is like super comfortable. In fact, I am amazed that more people aren't using that brand, Made in America, and it is just, it's an amazingly maneuverable, super stable, and it's pretty fast. I get that up to about like 35 knots if I get everything trimmed out just right. Well, 35 knots is, <laughs> it's, it's like 40 miles an hour. That's really flying. And the, uh, the skiff has a 90 horse on it, a 90 horse Yamaha, so that's like just about the right power package. It pulls skiers and pulls weight borders, and it has a tow package. So what that means to you is, is that instead of like normally people would tow a wake border off of the uh, off a little ring on the back of the uh, on the back of the skiff, but what happens is, is that we actually have a pole, uh, a tow pole, and the effect is, is that you can start your pulling from any direction. So that's one, that's one aspect, which, which translates out to a lot more time skiing and a lot more time in water sports and a lot less time setting up the direction of the skiff before you start your pull. In other words, I might, have, I might be pulling someone, you know, like let's say 50 yards off the beach and I'm just skidding along the beach and then they, then they fall. So I whip back around and go pick them up out of the water, drop, uh, give them the ski line, and I'm left, let's say, almost pointed at the beach. That's the way that uh, kind of the, 
the everything came to a stop when the skier grabbed the line. Well, if I was on a normal boat, if I was on a normal skiff, I would have to do all kinds of gyrations backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards to get pointed away from the beach. Whereas when I've got a tow bar, I can just take off any direction I want. And because the, the force of the pull is in front of the outboard prop, it means I can pivot on that force of the pull and I can just make a turn and go any direction I want. And that was a lot of work to put that together, but it really, really helps. Not only that, we also have a barefoot bar. And what a barefoot bar is, is that's a bar that goes out the side of the skiff and it's for teaching people how to do wakeboarding and water skiing and, and, uh, and it really makes the, the learning curve super quick because somebody's down there on the, uh, on the bar and I'm just directly next to him. I can just look over and talk to him. Whereas if somebody's out on the end of a line and I'm trying to get him to stand up, uh, and I'm taking off with the with the boat. Yeah, you know, people are shouting. They can't hear anything. The guy's in the water. He's got water in his ears. And so, but when we have a barefoot bar, and I've got somebody on the bar, and as soon as I see that they're starting to, let's say, fall, <coughs> excuse me, as soon as I see someone's about to fall, I can just let off the throttle. They don't even have to let go of the bar. And then they get themselves set. And meanwhile, I'm able to talk to them all very calm. Nobody's yelling at the guy. Yeah, you need to get your knees forward now. That's it. Now put the, put the board square. It's nobody screaming, squat, squat, you got to be down, down. In which the guy can't hear when he's back there on the, uh, on the end of a line. So that is really cool about that skiff situation. And here's the most important one. Out of everything that I've said so far... I haven't really addressed the safety issue. That skiff can be launched in just about any conditions. I have deployed and lifted up that skiff in 10 foot waves. And so with, with, and with a boat, la launching a skiff and being able to lift up the skiff in 10 foot seas is a huge, huge difficult procedure. It's like, it's like Olympic level skiff launching. Whereas in this situation, it all just kind of works, you know. You you can you get the you get the skiff dragging by the uh, by the bow lift, and then uh, which becomes kind of like the bow line, and then you start to get the uh, start to get the bow uh, out of the water. And once you have the bow out of the water, then you drag the stern around, and boom, the boat the skiff just comes right up. And you know the boat the the big boat Orion might be uh, might be rolling around a little bit because we're out in a seaway. And, but we have a pad against the outboard and the skiff just kind of bounces around in that little area right there against one pad and against the other pad and just goes boom, 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 boom. And that's it. We've, we've lifted up the, uh, the skiff. Whereas many guys, many boats would be, if they did, if they were able to launch in a seaway, which already is really a rare situation, if they were able to launch in a seaway, they wouldn't be able to pick back up the boat. And this is probably the best of all the skiff scenes that I have come across. And, you know, it's funny because... Like before this boat, we were on a, uh, on a big monohull, on a 93-foot monohull. And very famous designer, excellent designer, and it was a, it's a, just a beautiful boat and sailed like a dream. But when it came to the skiff, it's like so often I come across these boats and it's like they design the perfect boat. And then it's almost like they send it off to be built and then someone sends them an email and says, hey, uh, what about the skiff? Where does the skiff go? And then there's all this kind of, oh, well, I don't know, maybe we'll put it on deck and deflate it each time. Or, you know, it's like, it's, it's just amazing to me that someone would design a boat and not think about where the skiff goes. And this is actually exactly the opposite. With Orion, where they thought about where the skiff goes, somebody must have really put a lot of effort into working out how to deploy this skiff under all conditions, because it is a model. And if I was buying a boat, I would be saying to myself, that is something that I want on my boat. So there we go. That's, uh, I'm going to call that number 10. Number 10 is the ease of the skiff launching.